Something else you said that really piqued my interest earlier was a lot of us think we have these uh, highly informed opinions about things, but they're really just based on, you know, a YouTube video or an Instagram reel or some combination of these things that we've seen. Um, I think this speaks to how inherently programmable humans are, which is why I think earlier you were saying that, you know, to fight over the control of media is is really to control the narrative ultimately. So you're, so you're sort of controlling the the distributed software yeah. package in a way. That's a great way to put it. And but that because technology has shifted so quickly, that seems to be the struggle right now. It's like the the power structures that were adapted to controlling the top down broadcast media paradigm of the 20th century. Yeah. Things change so quickly in the past 25 years that they are scrambling to catch up and adapt to the social media paradigm, which we've just now really seen the censorship ramp up in the post-pandemic world. Yeah. What do you, I mean, a couple of things. That, I think, is such an important realization. If you just self-realize that you are programmable, that puts the power in your hands, right? Now you get to choose what, you know, consciously choose what you're going to, how you're going to think, who you're going to spend time with, what you're going to read, what what information you're going to ingest, basically. And then, too, I think it lets you hopefully develop that humility we were talking about earlier. It's yeah. like I am a highly malleable, adaptive software organism, but that means <laughs> I can be if I, you know, if I take myself too seriously or my opinions too seriously, yeah. I'm going to set myself up for failure. So you get to that strong opinions, loosely held thing that some people have talked about. So I wonder if, sorry, that's a bit of a like out there thing but no, i just I'm right there with you uh, people like i hope that <laughs> that's almost like the one point i would want to deliver to people it's like you know whatever you think you know just how you know and then uh, it always needs to be subject to revision and you are programmable so there's a very good chance if you haven't consciously programmed yourself for this opinion that you have been programmed by someone yeah. can i walk backwards through a couple of points you just said yeah. there and the, starting with this concept of ideas and people clinging to their opinions. Mm -hmm. And I can't stress enough that one of my main missions is to remind us all that you are not your ideas. <laughs> you are a, you are a soul in a meat suit yeah. and your ideas live outside <laughs> of you. And like, there's this thing where people will like pretend as though if you discussed an idea ever, then that's your opinion. If you talk to someone else that had an, a different idea you didn't even discuss, then you support them having that other idea right. too. And it's just really, it's, it's a giant like smear tactic campaign, but it's also an ego thing where people get attached yeah. to their ideas as yes. though they were their identity. Yes. And then they can't let go of them even when they're obviously wrong. Yeah. And that humility to just realize that like, you don't need to know everything. You don't yeah. need to be an expert. It's okay to be learning because the moment that you know everything, you're not learning. You're dying yeah um so that's that first piece of like how do we stop being programmed and then the second piece that i think blew my mind and what i'm i was talking about earlier is when my content completely shifted was realizing the nature of the information war today right. um, which we all kind of know is happening we all kind of know there is this sort of it's most obvious in politics especially in an election year but there's this really subtle thing that happens these days that has been happening ever since the cold war ever since the end of world war ii that i don't think any most people ever put into words and i didn't know it until i started to research the cia and any intelligence agency huh. but if you think about the job of the cia like the official job of the cia not like some conspiracy theory but officially the cia is here to protect our homeland from foreign subversive forces in any way that is not the traditional military way, right? Mm -hmm. um, because if you need to protect us from an army, send the army, you'll be good. Mm -hmm. But the reason for founding the CIA, I mean, there's some more subversive <laughs> ones, but like the, the obvious and stated goal mm -hmm. is to protect us from all these other threats. And it's obvious that the main threat today to our nation is subversive information misinformation mm. russian disinformation mm -hmm. like it is the cia's job to protect us from russian disinformation when it's actually russian disinformation <laughs> um whole other story there but if your job is to protect the american people in a free speech 
online media environment from disinformation. Mm -hmm. How do you actually do that? Because yeah. if you have free speech, anyone's allowed to come in and subvert the conversation with their free speech. Right. And so the only way that you can protect us from bad ideas that are theoretically like foreign subversive ideas intentionally mm -hmm. fed mm -hmm. into us to destabilize our systems of government mm -hmm. or whatever it is, is you have to feed in what are good ideas. You have to feed in accepted speech. So, <laughs> so it is literally the CIA's job to propagandize us mm, to counter support the American state. <laughs> because if Russia, let's just take this example, uh, like the Yuri Belzmakov example, I forget his exact name, you know, the vi famous oh, video yeah. of the KGB defector sure, right. talking about the sort of Soviet tactic of subversion, how you would subvert a country. Yeah, the from the States. 1970s, right? Exactly. Yeah. Is you would start to feed in information and, and destabilize the social systems that that stabilize America. And as you slowly knock out the pillars of American life and American economy, et cetera, America crumbles from within. And so if the CIA or any intelligence agency wants to protect their nation from those subversive ideas, it is their job to feed us ideas and to control our media spaces. Mm. And we know full well through things like the Twitter files that they do. And they do it by contacting our social media agencies and telling them what is and is not allowed speech. And they do it by feeding in and actually having disinformation campaigns and working with corporations and working with media, like media matters type mm -hmm. companies to essentially control our minds. That is their job. And it's not a conspiracy theory, it is their official job. And so in that space, you start to realize that ever since the atom bomb was invented, uh, kinetic war became only a proxy Right. As mm -hmm. in all through the Cold War, it was just proxy wars. And those were really just bankers wars doing which is this whole other fun aspect of what I do, which is exploring mm -hmm. how basically every war is There's these other war. covert, subversive yeah. like drug wars and yeah. fascinating. But other than that, the actual war is economic and it's ideological and it's informational and it's only ramped up since the Internet. And the crazy thing about that is that in an information war, this is the battlefield. Huh. And in that information war, we are the targets. Huh. No longer is it soldiers fighting soldiers. Now it is literally soldiers fighting us in our phones. And sometimes that's like metaphorically soldiers. But sometimes, like in the case of recently, there's been a bunch of stories running about the Israeli military mm. unit that actually like tweets to sort of like spread Israeli propaganda. And we do it too. Every country does that. Mm. It's literally soldiers that yeah. are propaganda yeah. propagandizing our information spaces. And so I think that this waking up of realizing that your information is not a uh, it, it's not a like naive, happy go lucky, like your Instagram feed is not just for cat videos. It no. is for programming you. Yes. And that programming is not just like some big conspiracy theory. It is literally just how warfare works today. Yeah. Wow, yeah. really well said. And I, the quote I love on all this, all the way back from Plato, those who tell stories rule society, right? So the battle's always over control of the narrative structure or the, the, the rails on which the narrative structure runs because then that is what plugs into the human mind. Yeah. That's what feeds it the stories and that's what rules people's actions in the world, basically. Exactly, and when I realized that, learned that, kind of put together what I just said, that started to get me thinking like, okay, th if they're doing that today, what in our history is true? <laughs> yeah, right. Which parts of history right. are actually just written by the victors to propagandize us to believing their narratives? Yeah. And which parts aren't and what really even happened? And that led to this whole new rabbit hole of like trying to unpack the real history of the world and the meeting on Jekyll Island is a great example of yeah. one where they knew at the time that no, there was this strong anti-central banking sentiment in mm -hmm. the United States. And there mm -hmm. were very powerful people that were opposed to it. And so that secrecy that they had around that meeting, which mm -hmm. they later openly talked about how secretive mm -hmm. it was once they had the control established, that was a part of affecting the narrative at the time in order to establish the control and to this day they still try to affect that narrative and there are various ways that they try to like alter our understanding of various historic events like telling how great the robber barons were captains and titans of industry which is true like jp morgan 
and like the guys that built all the railroads, the guys that built all the electrical lines, like, yeah, Edison was a genius. Mm. But there's this whole other side to that story that you have to really dig to learn about. Um, and so that's a super fun sort of avenue of content that I get into just because it's I mean, it's important. Yeah. But it's also just really fun to sort of unpack the mysteries of what is and is not even yeah. real. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, click here to find more just like it and here to find our most recent episode. Also, make sure to like this video to help shine light on the corruption of money and be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected.